Sahar Galt here, and I'm going to show you how to make your own sheet music. We're going to go through my favorite digital notation program, Finale, and make a beautiful, readable part in minutes. Let's get to it. Of course, you can write notation by hand and share that with the musicians you'd like to play your music. But not only is that exceptionally time-consuming, if your notation looks anything like mine, you've probably discovered that players much prefer notation they can actually read. And for that, luckily there's Finale. So let's fire up the program, jump into the setup wizard. You can choose a predefined ensemble, orchestra, or string quartet, but we're going to create our own slightly non-standard ensemble. Here you choose the instruments you're going to use. I know I'm going to be using a piano. There's going to be a couple cello parts. And Susan just got me an ocarina, so that's definitely getting used. And we're going to be notating a song I've been working on called Wreckage. We're going to hash out the introduction together. Uh, composer, hey, that's me. Here you can enter in your time signature, your key, and your tempo. You can always change this stuff later. And now Finale will generate a custom environment where you can input your music. Don't want something? Just click it, press delete. First thing, I'm going to move over to scroll view, which is a bit easier for inputting music. And you'll see that Finale is a really deep program with lots of options. But you can jump in right away by clicking a note value, then clicking on the staff. It's that easy. Now I need a 16th note, so I'll grab it from the note palette. If I make a mistake, I can just nudge the note with the up or down arrow. Now, you can also input notes by pressing the keys on the keyboard that correspond to the notes you want. So here, I'll just type the rest of the line, typing A, A, C, and I change the rhythmic value by pressing numbers on the number pad, and period for the augmentation dot. Job done. And now for repetitions, I just select the parts, then control click to copy. Not having to ride out repetitions is such a huge time saver. Okay, let's get going on the bass part. I'm going to click down there to make sure that Finale knows that's where we're working. And now I can type in my line. If Finale puts you in the wrong octave, press Shift, up or down arrow with the note selected. That'll move the note by octaves rather than steps. To quick select rests, press Control and the number value of the rest you want. Let's copy it over a couple times. Now this is my part, so I don't need to notate any more detail for myself. Finale will play it back so we can check what we've done. Great. Okay, now for one of the cello parts, I want it doubling the piano bass line. Now we can copy and paste to take this down to the cello part. You'll notice Finale transposed this down by octave. Is trying to avoid a problematic area in the cello range, but I actually want it where it was. So I can transpose this back up by an octave. That easy. Now Finale is doing something really helpful here, warning me about notes that might be hard to play. But I know the cellist. She'll figure it out. Now we're going to go into the expression tool and double click here on the first note, because this passage is meant to be pizzicato, plucked. That's what we want. Now, the expression tool is also where you select dynamics and other musical indications. So you can be as detailed as you like. On to the next cello part. This is a repeating ostinato played way up on the A string. Now, it's pretty clumsy to look at three ledger lines, so you can just change the clef. Most cellists are comfortable in the treble or tenor clef, in addition to the bass clef, of course. And see, this is just going to be a lot nicer to read. And here my input style is a little bit of a hybrid. I'm clicking on the staff while changing the note value with the number pad. So I can be going very quickly, but Finale automatically cleans it up and makes it look readable as I go. Okay, and a little closing bit here. To add a tie, just press T. Now that we're done with the note placement, we can get into articulation. So we click the articulation tool, single click the note you want to apply it to, and I want it staccato. We're going to do something different to the 16ths. 
So I move over to the next eighth. Now I could manually select the rest of the eighth notes to apply staccatos, but we can go even faster. If I select all of the notes, including the sixteenths, choose articulation one, that's staccato, and then instead of all notes, we're gonna choose notes within the range of durations. Now, I just want durations between eighth notes and eighth notes. And I don't want it applied to that tied note. If I click OK, Finale figures it out. It applied staccatos just to the eighths and left the sixteenths alone. Perfect. For sixteenths, I'm going to choose the Smart Shape tool. And this gives us access to slurs. And that's how I want the sixteenths treated. This means that the cellist won't change bow direction in between those notes making them sound very connected. Given this passage, there's a good chance your cellist would do that anyway. This makes sure that what you're thinking is what gets communicated and played. And for the ocarina part, we're gonna use the same notes, but articulate them differently. This is a common orchestration trick to create really interesting textures. So first we have to wipe out all the old articulations, select them, press delete, do the same for the smart shapes. And what I actually want here is a bouncy staccato all the way through. And the quickest way to do that is with the articulation tool selected, press S, select all the notes you want, and you're done. My directions so far have been pretty sparse, but I could probably give some insight on what I want to happen during this long sustain. So back to the smart shape, select decrescendo, click where we want the crescendo to start, and end. Get the ocarina too. And during playback, Finale follows these indications, giving you a pretty good preview of what your piece is gonna sound like when it's played by real performers. Okay, we're basically done here. Uh, there's some extra bars because we're only doing the introduction. Select those, press delete. Now you won't waste ink printing out a bunch of rests. Now the full score is nice for an overview of the piece and as a conductor's reference, but you don't give this to the performers. You're gonna have to extract the individual parts and Finale will do that automatically, giving you a beautiful, easy to read, compact piece of notation that you can either export as a PDF or simply print. Once you're done with the notation, you can use Finale to preview how things are gonna sound before you pass off the parts to performers. Jump into studio view and you can make sure the levels are okay. In this case, probably want to bring up the level on the pizzicato cello, or else we just won't hear it. Hit play. Now that we've seen everything's right, we can move on to the next stage, which is actually performing this thing. Okay, that's it for this time. Any questions? Ask me in the comments. Make sure you subscribe so you catch my future videos. And as always, thanks for watching. I'm Zahir Galt. I'll see you next time. <laughs>